Hey shop crafters, um, so I've taken the sitting fox apart um, and I'll kind of roughly go through that um, to try to see what's going on with this uh, uh, gun. And um, you know, it's uh, again a 1659 for the gun. Um, you know, it was a lot of money for something that um, when you can put it together yourself um, just in time. And now again, kits are running long, so it takes a long time right now to get a kit. Um, so part of the reason was this was a 36 ready to go and a nice style. This was something that I wanted. Everything fit the bill, but unfortunately, um, this is turning into more of a, a hassle than it should be. So I've got the lock off, and this is where the lock goes. This is my little touch hole right there. You can see, hopefully, and I'm trying to try to get that focused. But that is a slightly countersunk touch hole. This is just a screw that goes through. And this is a screw hole that goes through. These are for your lock screws. So there's your front lock screw. Here's my 832nd lock screw. This is just slightly dirty on the inside from shooting the other day. It's an L and R, and this is in full cock right now. So looking here, that's the full cock notch, that's the half cock notch, and then this is your trigger for firing in essence. You don't need a trigger to really fire these, you just push right here. And that goes off. When you cock it, this piece on this section of the release engages the half cock notch, which comes down here. And I'll see if I can do this. You know, left handed it's kind of hard. Um, I'm still getting everything in the light, so I'm going to pull down, and you're going to you're going to watch right here. I'm just going to jump into half cock. It's got a nice deep solid half cock. So it's in a nice deep half cock. And then I'm going to go to full cock. You're going to see the same thing. It comes back, click, and it goes in. And that's right here. The way your trigger works is you have a mainspring, which is this mainspring, which they have polished a little bit, kind of tuned. You can see where they touched it up on top of your rear set trigger get that on the rear set trigger here you can see where they kind of polish it down cut a little hole channel here which rests up underneath this section of the release so it sits so when you have a gun go together just make sure I'm in here when you get this when you have the gun go together it sits like this. So what I have to do is I have to set that rear trigger, which drops everything, and then that allows you to pull. I'm going to go to half cock here, in half cock, and then what that would that what that does is it sits like this, and you can see where the trigger is set in this underside of the rear. If I don't go to half cock, which is keeping, uh, which pulls this rear trigger completely out of the way, when you go to go to full cock, it's um, I'll fire this. See how it's sitting higher here than here. So this section, uh, let me put this here too. Hopefully that's going to help. So this section, when you come back, this trigger, the trigger bar is sitting, <coughs> sitting right here, engaged. So you go to full cock, it hits here, and it just fires it because it doesn't allow this rear to drop. So this, that's how this functions. So this sits kind of like this. So they recessed it a little bit. I guess they just didn't touch it. I mean, it's crudely, it's not even polished nice. Um, so you really need to work that down. Uh, the trouble is, I don't know, you know, without trial and error, and I don't know which one of these Davis triggers this is. Um, if you go too far, you got to start over, and I don't want to go too far. So I've got to do. I'm going to take some pictures of this, and I'm going to contact Log Cabin Shop, see if they can tell me which one of these, which one of the triggers this is, and get something. And maybe I'll just start over because um, that's kind of BS that they. The quality control at Sitting Fox is this crappy. Your set screw down here, which is what I was showing before in the videos, 
This set screw, when you push, turn it in, puts upward pressure on the front trigger. Which allows, so you're, so it basically is an over travel adjustment down in there. It just keeps the trigger sitting higher um, up there. Sorry for, I'm going to try to keep this as steady as I can. So it's an over travel, so it sits higher up so that when you go to release, you just gently touch that and it comes up and it falls off. Because again, the rear trigger will be below that. And that is sharp. Um, so the rear trigger is now below. So when you go to touch, I'll try to get it right here. So when you go to touch that front, starts to lift up, bam. And then that coordinates to the back here, which will then lift up and release that trigger right there. So I fall. So when I pull here, that goes up and that releases that cock. Uh, so <laughs> that's mainly what's going on with this gun. The next thing though, I want to show you. Um, down inside, this is my tang screw. Get rid of that. You can see they built up some epoxy or, or um, maybe some hot glue right there. You can see where they made a mistake in their inletting, so they took up just a piece of wood or a toothpick is a good uh, thing. You can you know glue it back in, whatever, not that big a deal. Um, and right here, they actually covered this over this little pin. And this is the root of why this trigger guard is so crappy, is they drilled it in a shitty angle. I'm sorry, crappy angle. <laughs> so you can see right there, I'm trying to get you in the light too, that silver pin right there. When you take that pin out, set the camera down. push that pin out, push that pin out of here, and that goes through this hole, there's a hole right there, and you can see they have a corresponding hole that they drilled through the guard. Now this, what they probably should have done is fit this first, taken off more of the top because it didn't go in far enough, or, or it goes in far enough, but they should have had upward pressure clamped to keep the trigger guard in. So they should have had it like this. And of course that pin fell back in. <laughs> um, but you should have had upward clamping pressure this way to seat this all the way down. Now here's the next problem I have with this. This is boxy. So you can tell they finished the gun with the trigger guard in place because it pulled all the finish out. This is epoxy where they tried to hide their mistake and uh, they attempted to glue it back in here as well because that's that's all epoxy. Back here you know you can see where they kind of polished it a little bit trying. Same thing on the rear, that's your hole that corresponds to the hole right here in the rear of the gun. And that, and now let's show you some cool stuff here. So here's that pin again that comes through. Push that out. So that pin is what holds this trigger guard in, so on the front end. And they should have had clamping pressure down when they were drilling this, but they obviously did not. They did it freehand, which is a lack of quality control in my opinion. So you can see where they tried to hide their mistakes by shoving epoxy in or hot gluing it in or something. So that's a, a, a rookie mistake in terms of uh, wood fitting. I would have actually uh, 
scrapped this trigger guard or um, you know done something you know I mean crap you could have even put JB weld on it and redrill it out I don't know um, but you can see where they recessed it and that's where your tang screw comes through and you can see where they chipped out that is a I'll try to get the light a little bit off of here this is a different color piece of wood and here's the other thing is that so they got sideways grain going this way um, so they chipped out when they were drilling out and mortising too much wood so they put in a, a piece of wood again filling wood back into a wood area is fully standard accepted practice not a big deal but it just shows you the lack of quality control and their builder and what he's doing and what they're putting out. You know, I guess this is what's going to make the difference between a $4,000 gun from uh, a high-end builder and a $1,600 gun from a no-name builder that they're afraid to tell you who the builder is, I guess. Uh, you look at this inletting right there. On the back, you know, it just... It's not high quality. Um, so then the, the trigger goes in like this. And then your trigger guard goes in over like this. And here's where you can see that gap. Um, if, if I push down, you can make that work. But you can see all that room. And there's not enough space now where the pin goes to make that fit properly. So what I'm going to do is take a couple of pictures before I reassemble this and see if Log Cabin can get me the exact one. Or I actually have one of their catalogs. I'm going to see if I can find this one and just order a new one and uh, do this properly. Because these guys at Sitting Fox um, obviously don't know what they're doing. Um, because uh, even if you were going to drill through here and put your pin, the pin placement, what I would have done, on, and, and by no means am I an expert, but I do woodworking, um, I would have at least drilled out this channel halfway after recess in the bottom, gone to where I saw a light, and then I would have put my trigger guard in, and I would have stuck it in place, and I would have used some kind of uh, ink drop through there or taken something like this all and put some marking black on there and touch where that hole is supposed to be and then I would have taken that this out and I would have made sure uh, instead of trying to drill it all out at once and if I was coming out on the pinhole I'd measure up and go from this side and this side or I'd mark it make sure I'm in the right spot drill out touch that and then take this to a, a press where it's even and drill out the other side at which point you put it back in here clamp this down somehow and, it, and the thing is here's when you get creative and clamping you can actually wrap a cloth around this or a piece of rope string bind this tight um, and clamp that together hold it in place and drill out so that you can get a nice tight flush fit um, there's lots of ways to do it there's lots of building books that do it but apparently this I can tell you whoever did this probably freehanded this because the angle of the pin that's going through too is actually angled through there and then just the the sub quality um, attempt at re-gluing this in is just terrible so um, let that be a lesson to anybody going through here I'm going to tell you I mean look you can see right here look at that big gap right there um, I'm gonna push this pin back out maybe <laughs> When I put that in there, look at that big gap on the rear of the trigger. I, I pointed that out before, but I mean that's that's just piss poor quality control. Um, so I just don't think the builders at Sitting Fox um, are competent enough to be making. Um, uh, they're competent enough to put out a product. They're not competent enough to be charging, uh, in my opinion. Um, twice what this kit costs. I mean, um, I would, uh, if, if you're buying this kit for, you know, parts and pieces for 600 bucks, 700 bucks, um, 800 maybe, um, you're doubling your money at 1600. But, um, 
when you're putting this quality out, I would at least, you know, you're obviously a new builder. At, there are new builders at Sitting Fox where they're not uh, caring about repeat business or what. I'm not sure. But um, the uh, I wouldn't personally charge that. Um, you know, I probably should have demanded my money back, but, um, you know, you, you try to work through it. You, the quirks, the things, you got to shoot it to know what's going on. You've got to experiment with it. And uh, I'll tell you, it is not... Um, in my opinion, it's not worth the money, hands down. You may have a different story with them, but um, what it's going to take to get this together is you know a lot of time um, and make it right. So I'm looking at if I want this to fit right, I have to um, either replace it, fill it, or sand it down, uh, re-drill it. I can't. I mean, I, I suspect now that. Um, if I put this in in the proper position in the depth and try to clamp it, I'm going to come in and enlarge the hole so that you know I can increase my pin size. But that means I increase here, and I don't know where my clearance is going through next to the screws and everything else. So that changes a lot of stuff. The trigger, the same thing. You look at um, how crappy, you know, um, that is. Again, using proper uh, techniques good files, um, proper sandpaper, I can fix that, I'm sure. And I'm gonna start by polishing and smoothing it. It just needs to come down a little bit, but you can just see it looks like a kid did it. Um, you know, like if you took a kid out to a playground and said, here, you know, play with this. Uh, and, you know, that's good enough. Um, you know, in my opinion, if you're selling these things, it's it's not good enough as an A stock. It's a, you know, call it a B stock gun and you know, be done with it. Um, the flintlock portion of it, the LNR, it, does, it is not their problem at all. That lock is working just fine. Um, so the LNR lock works great. But the touch hole, the mortise, the pin placement, um, you know, and you can see, you know, I mean, this is all good, but I, I think, um, you can see where they went in and they kind of epoxied a little bit down in there trying to fill in some mistakes. Not a big deal. Um, you know, original guns probably just look just like that, but you can see there's some, just some crap going on in here that, you know, I wouldn't have been comfortable selling this as a, uh, as a gun builder. Uh, not as a, uh, hey, this is a, a complete awesome gun. I would have sold it as a B stock. I said, yep, we've got uh, no fit and finish issues, things like that. But she's a shooter; she works and all that. You may, uh, you know, there's uh, some fitment stuff, but uh, that's where it, you know where it was. But anyway, um, hope that helps. I'm gonna take a couple of pictures here, and then I'm gonna throw it uh, back together, and uh, I'm gonna keep using it because uh, it's gonna take a little while to get those parts in and, and see what I can do. I got to figure out. Um, what I want to do in terms of um, you know replacing these things, but uh, it's a bummer. It's a bummer when you get a, a bad deal like that, and uh, you know I don't know how Ray would react. He didn't seem very uh, uh, concerned when I told him the front sight was smashed uh, in shipping and that the trigger guard was loose, um, and he didn't seem to offer any solution to that. Um, and just the the thing is, is when you put your tang screw in through the top. What happening is is it uh, is actually pushing down on the trigger behind the trigger guard here, and it's creating pressure, and that's it still has the gap, but it tightens it up from being wobbly. So it, it works, but it's kind of a crappy, so crappy scenario for the money spent. So anyway, um, you know my recommendation, and just just my recommendation, your mileage will vary. Um, it's a pretty gun, um, but it also has pretty much a lot of problems going on with it. So I can't recommend them as a company. Uh, thankfully, I'm not endorsed by them, and um, but I can't recommend them as a building company. I can't, uh, if you're looking at them, uh, I know one of the viewers here, you said you ordered a kit from them. The kit's probably going to be better because you're going to be putting it together yourself. Um, but as a finished gun, for the money, get a Petters Ole in the same price point, um, or contact a builder and, you know, and see what you can do. I mean, lead time is one of those things, uh, but frankly, for the money, $16.59. I should have just ordered two guns from uh, Track of the Wolf or uh, Log Cabin or something like that and put them together myself and just, you know, sucked it up and uh, had a winter project going on there. But when I found that uh, Virginia Colonial gun here, 
um, you know, eighteen twelve lock gun uh, for what seven hundred fifty bucks. Um, uh, unfortunately, I found that after the other one, and uh, you can definitely tell. I'll tell you, to be honest, I'm disappointed, and I think it's a, a load of crap that you would sell this as a uh, as a quality gun. Uh, again, B stock it all day long. I would have bought it if you told me that. Even at that price point, if you told me it was a B stock, um, I still probably wouldn't have bought too much on it. I probably would have asked for a slight dis discount on whatever. But uh, you know, if I was him selling these guns, I, I think you know a fair price on this gun would have been twelve hundred because you're right around the same prices. Uh, being that it's American made, maybe I, I guess he says it's made here. Um, but uh, you know, and just be truthful in what it is, and say, "Hey, look, there's a couple of blemishes and flaws." Uh, you know, I, I would buy blemished bags, blemished uh, whatever, blemished guns uh, all day long, knowing that going in. But uh, to put that on a website to have that as, uh, "Hey, this is a finished product," it just it, you know, it, it's a, a little, you know, not, what do you say? Not heartbreaking. Uh, I mean, what would you say? It just sucks. You say you spend your good hard money on it, and um, you got a product that. Uh, has a lot of issues. So anyway, hope that helps. I'm not knocking them. As so I'm not knocking them as a company, but um, uh, in terms of that, I can tell you in my experience, I would not recommend them to anybody who's watching this channel. Um, in terms of a finished gun, unless you ask lots of questions and you ask for better pictures, uh, I did ask a couple of questions about pictures. Uh, he did not provide them for me. He gave me his phone number and a one-line response. Ray, the owner, and. Um, uh, maybe it was the fact that it was a 36 it was a 42 inch barrel everything that I wanted was ready to go but it uh, <sighs> I should have just walked away um, you know and now I'm too far in it because I've shot it so much uh, you know I wouldn't even dream of asking it that's not who I am as a person but uh, um, you know if you guys Ray if you're watching this or your builders watching this I, I would uh, the only thing I would tell you is I would say if you put out this as a product um, I would recommend that just call it a B stock, you know. Say, hey, look, we got a couple of quirks with it, and and price it accordingly. I mean, twelve, fourteen hundred bucks is not re unreasonable. Um, but the simple solution is you can buy one of these trigger guards from Log Cabin or uh, Track the Wolf or what. Uh, you know, some of these are thirteen bucks, seventeen bucks. Uh, some are up to twenty, thirty, forty bucks. Uh, it's not a lot of money to buy another one, to put it and do it right. Um, if you screw it up and then take this one and just build a different gun with it, you know, and, and mark it accordingly. Um, but uh, to keep it in there with that fit and finish problem, to have those, this trigger problem that's going on, I mean, you put out an unsafe gun that drops the uh, um, the hammer when you cock it, it's not supposed to do that. Um, you know, and it's just because, you know, I finally took this off, but it's just because it wasn't tuned properly to there. So it's just, a, um, you know, you put out an unsafe, product that um, uh, I guess it's a new builder doing it I mean I this is quality that I would expect from me as a first-time builder building one um, you know and I'd be like all right cool I learned something uh, but me also would have bought a replacement trigger after screwing it up if I if I went further and I'd, I'd put a right one in and then I have this as a learning experience so anyway thanks for watching and I hope this saves some of you guys the heartache um, of uh, going through and buying something that you think it is so ask questions um, there was a gun on uh, gun broker that's an original. I asked the guy a lot of specific questions. I spaced them out because people have a tendency to read through things. Um, and I passed on his gun on gun broker. It's an original um, Val or something, V-A-L-E. Um, and looks nice. I asked him the questions. He answered two or th two of the 10 questions that I asked for. That's a hard pass for me now, especially it was after buying this gun. Uh, because I knew on this one, I asked a lot of questions. He didn't answer all my questions back. Um, but I went ahead anyway, hard pass. Um, and, uh, you know, had he been, had he answered all my questions, I probably would be shooting that gun on a video as well. Um, so anyway, hope this helps. Hope you guys learned something from this. Hopefully, uh, it's informative. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I'll have more videos coming up. Um, but I think this is it in terms of, uh, knocking this company. Uh, it's about as far as I can go now. I'm going to try to drill out this touch hole, put the liner in and uh, figure out how I'm going to do this uh, trigger guard and all the uh, triggers and all that stuff. So, um, you know, unfortunately, that's, it's going to cost me another, you know, probably $100 into this uh, by the time I'm done with everything uh, to get it working right. But 
um, lessons learned. And uh, next one I'll be building myself. If I if I mean if I make another one, because I got enough now. But, uh, you never have enough. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope uh, it, this uh, answers some questions and, and kind of helps guide people on their journey. Thanks.